Welcome to Kid Missing TV. We are back to our regular schedule of Tuesdays and Thursdays. Today, as promised on Sunday, we're talking about the case of 14-year-old Margaret Fox. She vanished from Burlington, New Jersey. She and either a cousin or friend put an advertisement in their local newspaper to offer their babysitting services. This was June 24th, 1974, the last day she was seen. A man answered the ad calling himself John Marshall. This man <coughs> proved, proved to be phony, proved to be an alias. He seems to, from my research, have taken the name from the manager at the local grocery store where he in fact made the calls from a payphone. Um, he told her to meet him in Mount Holly. You know, she took a bus from her home to Mount Holly. It was very close. I think it was seven miles. Um, and was supposed to walk to a spot to meet him in a VW bug. That alone is terrifying. <laughs> um, if you're old enough to remember Ted Bundy, you know why that is so terrifying. <laughs> um, it truly is. There were a couple of other bad guys that liked to drive those things. Um, but she went to meet him. She was seen getting on the bus by, again, Reports differ whether it was a little sister or a little brother. Um, and she was seen getting off the bu bus, walking toward the meeting spot in Mount Holly. So that's as far as they know she got. Um, this man didn't have, I would venture to guess, probably didn't actually have children. He was interested in children in a bad way. Even though he said he wanted her to sit for his five-year-old. Um, <clears throat> the weird thing about the spot where she was walking to to meet him from the bus stop is the spot was right across the street from the Mount Holly Police Department. Who does that? If you're going to take a kid in front of the police department? Really? I don't think that's very bright. Unless you figure nobody's going to think anything of it because she's willingly getting in your vehicle. It's brazen either way. It's, it's, it's truly brazen. Um, so, um, <clears throat> it was on Lower Mill Heights, uh, Lower Mill and High Streets, excuse me, um, where they were to meet across from the police station. I'm thinking one of the reasons he may have done that is because she may have felt comfortable um, when she got there and realized, oh, police station's right here, I'm safe. Oops. Um, he was probably not a young man. He was probably a middle-aged man, according to her father, who actually talked to him on the phone. Um, there was a possible connected case in 1977. The stabbing death of Patricia Cal Calfal. Calfu? I apologize that I'm, I'm not pronouncing this correctly. K-U-H-L-T-H-A-U. Who was 15 by Jack Owens and he lured her through a fake babysitting job as well. Um, he had sex convictions dating back to 1969. Actually it was, um, I thought it was Jack Owens because that's what it said, but Owens was actually his middle name. Um, again he used his babysitting scheme to lure other victims. In that case, for whatever reason, he killed her. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about what Margaret was wearing, what she had with her. 
Margaret was wearing jeans with yellow knee patch, gold flower necklace with a blue stone, a gold charm bracelet with blue stone. She had a brown bag with Huckleberry Hound eyeglass case. Um, in a hoax in 1976, a man confessed. He was not responsible. In 2019, the FBI set up a $25,000 reward for information in this case. Um, a $10,000 ransom call was enhanced at that same time, and it had a very mm, unique saying. He said, $10,000 is a lot of bread, which was a co which was common vernacular for the time period, but he said, but your daughter's life is the buttered topping. That's a little strange to me. Um, and to other people who I've um, watched, um, read in my research, excuse me. Um, it came four days after her disappearance, and it was also likely a hoax. Seems I only called that one time and nothing else. Um, <coughs> he did try to call the other girl. <coughs> Presumably that. <laughs> Presumably because her phone number appeared first in the advertisement. Her mother said, no and hell no. <laughs> um, everybody's different. You know, every parent is different in how they parent their child. Her parents felt comfortable. The other little girl's parents didn't, and I'm betting they're glad they weren't. Um, he was described as sounding between 30 and 40 years old. Now, this is by the adults. Kids, uh, it's not as accurate, even at 14. <laughs> Let me tell you a funny story. A friend of mine, she was in her late teens, early, maybe early 20s. I was a kid, and she said a man was hitting on her. Well, she was a pretty girl, and she came to our house. She was all upset. My father, being protective dad of everybody, said, who? What'd he do? You know? She said, and she said, he was old. You know, and my dad's ready to defend her. And How old? She, he had to be at least 30. <laughs> So, when you're young, you have a different impression of old. But the grown-up said he sounded between 30 and 40. Um, so, other parents started coming forward and saying that their daughters had had similar experiences, this strange man calling. Um, And uh, he may have tried to pick up a girl right in Mount Holly the month before Margaret vanished. He also drove a red VW, the person that tried to pick up the girl. That makes you go, hmm, doesn't it? And also there's another case that could be connected. The case of Teresa Cassiero. Uh, Cassiero. Uh, she was murdered in nearby Willingboro. Um, a man in a red car was seen at her home. Um, and both men, the man in um, the other p potential abduction, and this man were described as having sandy hair. Um, unfortunately, Margaret's dental records have mysteriously disappeared. They don't know what they did with them. Hello. Um, I want to give you the phone numbers. <clears throat> the FBI ne uh, Newark, New Jersey office, which is in charge of the case, 1-973-792-3000. And the Burlington City Police is 1-609- Three eight six zero two six two extension two hundred and eleven. Um, I want to first of all 
tell you about the next case on our agenda. The next case on our agenda is the case of Cynthia Kuhn. Cynthia was went missing on January 19, 1970. She was 13 years old. And you know what's funny? I'm missing a whole page of her. But anyway, um, so that's what we'll be discussing on Thursday. And I just want to take a minute um, here at the end of the show to... Um, I want to dedicate, um, I know I did that last time too, but I think it's important to acknowledge people who made a difference for you. Um, though I never met him in person, I did see him in person many times. Um, I want to dedicate uh, this month to Carmen. Um, he was a Christian singer. I um, said I'd seen him many times, and um, he was the f first time I felt the Holy Spirit. And there isn't you can, you can't pay for that. You can't. There's nothing I can do except dedicate these next few shows to his memory. Um, cause he just passed away thanking him for the work that he did for the Lord. As I've told you in previous episodes, I'm very Christian. Um, but I, I choose to live it rather than spew it. <laughs> um, but I do want to dedicate these next few shows because, like I said, he, he's made a huge impact on my faith as a teenager. Um, and I know he's in heaven now getting his rewards for the impact he made on a whole lot of people. And for the people that he brought to Christ, including my cousin. So, that being said, have a great day, guys. I really enjoy bringing you these cases. Um, sometimes they anger me, sometimes they confuse me. Um, and Write in the comments. Let me know what you think of these cases. Yeah, I know. Um, because it's important. The more we discuss and the more th these cases get out, the more likely we're going to be able to find a resolution. Uh, and that's the important thing. Is resolution for families. I don't like the word closure. Resolution means, excuse me, you find out who did it, you find out where the person is or where their remains are, and lay them to rest in a Christian burial. That's, or commit them if you choose. That's resolution. But you'll never have closure because somebody took your family member away. You can't just close the door on that, you know, just like, <coughs> even though we have resolution, we buried my dad, my uncle, closure doesn't exist. You can't close the door on people that you loved. And to me, that's what closure is. You're closing that person's chapter in your life, and I don't believe in that. Again, let me know what you think, and we're still trying to get to 100 by spring. 100 subscribers by spring, guys. We can do this. Thank you for taking a few minutes out of your precious day to watch my video. Goodbye, and God bless, and mask up, M.A.